Welcome. Thank you so much for your time today. We're really excited to join you while we're in the midst of this uncertain period period around us. Uh, my name is Jennifer Ugo. I'm the managing director and I um, own Corvertis as well, own and lead Corvertis. And I'm here with my colleague, Sam uh, Lawson. Hi, and uh, I'm a talent management specialist at Corvertis. And, and basically just like last week, we're just here to connect and share some knowledge take some of the empirical psychological science you research and, uh, and share it with you and how it can actually be applied and used in, in your day to day, especially as you're going through all the things that you are right now, regardless of, of where you're at and where you're, what your organization is dealing uh, is what your organization is dealing with. So uh, Sam, I know you've been looking at some different research on job satisfaction. Yeah, yeah, so I can get us started here. Um, some of the stuff that I've been looking at has uh, kind of stemmed from a lot of uh, what I covered in some of my graduate work with, uh, you know, what motivates employees, what, uh, what causes jobs um, to be, you know, satisfactory to employees and different things like that. So uh, with so many furloughs and layoffs happening right now, I'd argue that it's, you know, it's a really critical time to focus on the employee experience. Um, engagement has most likely been or certainly will be uh, impacted as a result of this transition to a virtual world and just working remotely, um, as well as the loss of key team members, either temporarily or permanently, and just the impact that that might have on the rest of the team currently working. So um, if you're in a position of leadership, uh, things to think about right now and just going forward might include, you know, how are, uh, how are your current team members responding to working in a remote space? How are they responding to losing key members of the team, especially those who maybe they've formed like really close relationships with? Um, how are they responding even to like potential shifts and responsibility, uh, greater workloads, reductions in pay as a result of teams just operating at a leaner capacity uh, due to some of those furloughs and layoffs? Uh, Jen, do you have anything to add to that or any thoughts there? No, we are working with um, not only our current clients, but any organization that would like a COVID pandemic focused survey. Uh, we are offering them uh, at no charge, just as part of our, our way to, to try to help in this difficult time. Uh, but definitely to, to Sam's point, we've lost a lot of the, uh, or a lot of the hygiene factors I think are in jeopardy right now. Uh, people don't have that office to go into, or in some cases, you know, they're, they're furloughed or they're, uh, they're not working right now and getting paid right now. So how can you keep that connection and that relationship? So you're not delivering maybe a key part of that relationship with pay, either being cut or, or uh, on hold right now, but how can you keep those other key parts of the relationship, which sometimes can be incredibly sustaining, uh, just like with any relationship, having that connection, feeling supported, feeling valued. What ways can you deliver that right now is the key question. And that yeah. can help you retain and grow over time. Yeah, certainly just being able to maintain those uh, positive connections and just being able to maximize the employee experience both now and in the long term right. um, can be really impactful. So um, just to kind of uh, touch on a few more things here before I hand it over to Jen, um, just among the many drivers of engagement and subsequently retention um, is feelings of value and belonging, uh, the perception that leadership is not only approachable, but they're, they're also there to listen to any, you know, concerns that you might have during this time. Even if leadership doesn't have the resources to, you know, necessarily address or resolve those concerns right away, just being there to listen to your concerns, empathize with you can be really impactful. And so um, Jen alluded, you alluded to this a second ago with those hygiene factors, but to tie all of this together, um, I just want to touch on briefly a bit of theory and research for just a second here. Um, those drivers of engagement that I just mentioned um, which, you know, leaders have direct and complete control over, you know, your ability to provide recognition, opportunities for growth and development. Um, those have roots in what we call the two-factor theory of motivation, uh, which does have applications to engagement, and then also directly applies to the workplace through job enrichment, which is another concept I'll just briefly touch on. Um, so, you know, for anyone who's watching this segment, I just want to quickly touch on these 
Uh, certainly don't want to bore you with the theory, but just kind of tie everything together with how they apply to the workplace and what you can do as a leader right now uh, to really maximize the employee experience going forward. So the idea is that employees are motivated by two sets of factors, uh, those being hygiene factors, which Jen mentioned a little bit ago, things like pay, uh, your work relationships, your work environment, just things that you expect to have with most any job. Um, and then motivator factors, which would be things like recognition for performance, opportunities for growth, those clear cut drivers of engagement and the employee experience being as positive as possible. And so uh, those two factors suggest that uh, satisfaction and dissatisfaction um, are not necessarily opposites on the same scale, but rather they operate independently of each other. So for example, let's say I'm an employee and I get a raise, I'm likely to not feel dissatisfied, but it's not going to necessarily lead me to feeling fulfilled or satisfied either. That feeling is going to be more uh, temporary or short term, but in order to feel satisfied, I want opportunities for growth and development, recognition for performance, uh, to feel that I'm valued and appreciated. And those are, that's what's ultimately going to lead to that um, engagement piece, feeling engaged, feeling fulfilled and valued. And so, um, you know, that leads us right into job enrichment, being able to uh, essentially modify jobs in such a way so that employees can experience more of those motivator factors. Um, Jen, do you have anything Sam, to add to that? Yeah, Sam, what are some things that like you've experienced that have enriched your job? Just yeah, guys. certainly. Um, just, you know, opportunities, opportunities for growth, even a sense of autonomy too. So having freedom, not only over the work that you're currently doing, but the way in which you execute it as well, but then also being able to receive like regular feedback as well right. on like my progress on something that can really help enrich a job and just provide that valuable experience for the employee. Good to know. Yeah. I will work on doing more of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you, Sam. That was a really great in-depth and useful applied overview. So we have the things like the hygiene factors that I mentioned, you know, pay, safety, security, some of those being called into question, but we can still give feedback, still provide different opportunities, care about people, all of that. Uh, so on that topic of caring, I'm going to talk a little bit about corporate social responsibility. So Sam, have you ever switched from buying a product or service to something else because of something related to the company around corporate social responsibility? Yeah, I, I definitely have. I think that kind of gets into a little bit what we talked about last time with brand reputation. So if yeah. a company acts in a way that maybe doesn't align with your values, then you might, mm -hmm. you know, take your business elsewhere. So certainly. Yeah, exactly. So more than actually 90% of people have done that at some point. I know I have. I've learned something about a brand and have altered my uh, how I buy things or what I do because of that. So corporate social responsibility, clearly organizations are all part of the world. And to what extent are we contributing to the greater good? Of course, that's nebulous. We all perceive the greater good and philanthropy and what charities we want to support in different ways, what causes, values, things like that. But there are are still, there's always this question of how does it affect employees? And it does, in fact, it is a strong driver of how an organization kind of navigates that, what causes it supports or how it manages its impact on the world, because everything we do affects sustainability. And when we look at that, uh, people want to know why. So first, like, does it affect turnover? Does it affect retention? And then what are the mechanisms that it's really tackling or getting at that affect that. So I found an article in the um, in a journal, a very well-established journal for um, psychology and industrial organizational psychology called Personnel Psychology. And it looked at how uh, corporate social responsibility affects uh, retention and affects different perceptions, micro perceptions that we might have on a day-to-day -day basis. And it found that corporate social responsibility, how I perceive that, if I perceive an alignment on positively that my organizations doing good things in the world, that it affects my sense of pride. I feel proud to be affiliated with a company, which is interesting because that's something we always measure in our surveys and is a key piece of how we view the employee experience. Um, we want people to feel competent, confident, significant, and a sense of pride. So that pride piece, that directly affects what IO psychologists call organizational embeddedness. And that is simply a sum of all the different forces that keep me in a job. 
So that could be my fit uh, with the organization. So fit, I know that can get a, a bad rap, but fit just means that alignment between who I am as a person and the job. The different linkages that I have that kind of keep me wanting to stay there. So friendships, feeling connected with the community, feeling uh, connected overall with things I care about. And then the last thing is basically sunk costs. So that if I leave, I'd be sacrificing all this stuff. So sometimes that could be like the office was famous for this with Jim. I think it was Jim talking about, you know, if he left Dunder Mifflin, that he would lose the ability, lose all this paper knowledge. Like he spent all this time learning about paper and learning specifics about his industry. And if he lost, if he left, so all this kind of worthless knowledge would be, you know, even more worthless to him. So besides that, you know, what is that sunk cost of I'm with this organization that does all these great things and I'm supporting it in a way by being employed there. If I leave, I lose that. So that's organizational embeddedness and pride directly feeds into that. So they found that that organizational embeddedness then affects turnover and turnover perceptions uh, four months and eight months out. So my likelihood of saying that I'm going to leave, my likelihood of leaving and actually leaving are affected months and months out from me saying, you know, I'm, I'm cool with and I like what my organization's doing as a part of the world. So that's pretty powerful. And right now, like we talked about the survey that we're doing to help anyone that's interested with uh, the pandemic, but that's also powerful just because of how you communicate. Not that you should engage in corporate social responsibility just to keep your employees, but to really communicate it and, and the why and what you're doing. And that's something that we've talked about with our clients as well is making sure people know all the good that you're doing in the world. Uh, some things that could get overlooked, like maybe you're giving internships to people or um, you know, you're making donations or there's a lot of things in a big company or even a mid-sized or small company, there could be things going on that people don't realize and making sure that people know what's going on and know all that you're doing and that you maybe chose to do a practice or process this way because it will help uh, the environment or provide this opportunity, how you're selecting vendors. Just spread that news, that good, good knowledge around so that way people can feel that connection, feel that sense of pride and feel part of your organization. Uh, and again, with sort of what Sam was talking about, with those hygiene core factors, you know, pay maybe is stagnant, going down or not there, uh, you're not in the office, you're losing a lot of your ability to make people feel connected. So if you can say, you know, we're doing X, Y, Z in our business, we've modified this process, we're giving to this charity, we're amping up, there's, you know, students who haven't you know, who are maybe planning to be elsewhere or haven't had their regular semester college students. So we're going to give internships or we're going to employ high school students right now. All the good things that you're doing, just make sure you send that out there uh, because it just spreads that connectedness, that feeling uh, that everyone's doing something valuable um, and supporting the greater good. Yeah, certainly. And that's, that's something that not only has implications for retention, as you mentioned, but even for hiring too. just your ability as an organization to attract candidates to your mission or your values or, you know, the object objectives, excuse me, or initiatives that you might be striving to achieve. And I know, um, Jen, as you just mentioned, a lot of companies, you know, really within the past five to 10 years, it seems, um, have increasingly been, you know, putting things on their website, like here's how we're being environmentally responsible, uh, different types of things around sustainability, which does seem to be a, a little bit more prevalent within industries like manufacturing, um, the airline industry, uh, even the service sector, but just being able to communicate as an organization, you know, how are we reducing our environmental footprint and then beyond just that component, just communicating the values that your organization has and how you execute those um, can really go a long way to just building your culture and attracting the right candidate for the position or you know whatever you might be hiring for. And that sense of pride is a key driver. So you know just in general beyond corporate social responsibility, especially right now, communicate things that make your employees feel proud and psyched to be where they are and to be with you. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. Certainly. All right. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, all the information that we cited, some uh, cool stats and info on Hertzberg's theory and corporate social responsibility will be down below in our show notes. Uh, so feel free to check that out and contact us. If there's anything we can do to support you right now, we're sort of stuck in the, a lot of the day to day and uh, struggling to push through this and 
if you can, you know, take some time out to look at the big picture. What were your 2020 goals? And can you take a few hours each week to work towards one of those 2020 goals? Uh, to, or, and how can you support your teams in doing that as well? So that when we emerge through this, uh, you know, we're still focused on, on all that we can do and achieve and the great things ahead. So our thoughts are with you and uh, look forward to connecting again next week. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bye. everyone.